Hi, this is April with the Cat Scrappiness Design Team. So glad to have you with us today. I'm gonna to show you a cute card using some products from our brand new release for Valentine's Day. Gonna use the Be My Valentine cardstock pad, the Sweet Te Tweets, sorry, stamp set, and the Tweet Hearts die set. This die set is so adorable. I love this little perch and these little lovebirds are too cute. So I'm gonna start by cutting out our little perch from some uh, silver cardstock. <clears throat> Just ran it through my die cut machine and then um, using a little uh, piercing tool here to pop out my die and those little tiny pieces that are in the chain, you're going to have to remove. Um, and you also want to remove all the little bits from inside your die each time you use it as it helps it cut better the next time. <clears throat> so I have my little um, perch all done up there and now I'm just going to take a piece of white cardstock that I like to blend on and I'm just going to lay down all my other pieces. has two cute little birds, the wings and the beaks for those birds. And it has um, these sweet little hearts that I'm gonna use as some embellishments. And then it has a little uh, wooden perch that you can put on the bottom of the, sil uh, the silver perch. I think it looks super cute when it's all done. I'm just gonna hold these in place with some tape. Um, those little beaks are pretty small. I would suggest that you do what I did down below and if you can leave that little beak attached to a bigger die just so you don't misplace them because you don't want to lose any of the pieces of your um, die set and I suggest that with any die set that has little tiny pieces. So I'm going to ink blend and I want all these pieces to stay in my cardstock. So I'm just using some post-it tape. I flipped that over when I was done die cutting and um, gonna put this tape on the back to hold those into place. Gonna remove my little um, dies and put those back, remove the tape from them, put those back on my magnet sheet so I have all my pieces together. And anything that's stuck in the die, I'm just popping those out and gonna put those back in um, where they belong and that post-it tape from behind will grab a hold of those and it just makes it a a lot easier to ink blend this way than having all those little tiny pieces separate i mean i could never imagine i'm not even sure you could actually get the little beak ink blended without holding it into place so once i have all of those popped back into place um I'm gonna grab my ink pads. But first I wanna tell you that I purposely left the um, eyes white because I wanna stack those. So you'll see what I do with the eyes in a minute. Uh, the one has an eye, the other one has eyelashes. So I'll show you what I do with those in a minute. But um, I'm gonna grab some little uh, blend, these little mini uh, brushes from Cat Scrappiness. This is my first time using them and I love them. I love any little blending brush that I can hold like a pencil. I just think I have a lot more control over it and I can direct that ink exactly where I want it. So for my little wood portion of my perch, I'm just gonna ink blend that in some walnut stain and then I do add a little bit of detail with some black soot. Um, this, and it's hard to pick up in pictures, but this particular die has um, some wood grain in it and it actually has a couple little wood knots in it. And I think this ink um, gets right into those creases and looks super cute. And the black just kind of helps bring it all to life. And I just think that dimension in the two different colors really make it look very wood-like. And so I'm just going around at the edges and on both ends with this black soot. And it doesn't have to be very perfect, as you can see. That's why I love ink blending, because when you get it all done, it just looks perfect. So next I'm gonna grab some reds to do my one little bird. And I just grabbed some Lumberjack plaid and some aged mahogany. 
and I'm choosing to do two different colors or two darknesses of color on the birds to add some dimension and depth to them. So I'm going to start and when you first, I like my ink, my blending brushes well seasoned. I never, you can wash them. I don't tend to wash mine. I do clean them off with a microfiber cloth until no more ink comes off of them. And I can go from lights to darks and darks to lights. As long as I clean them off well between, I don't transfer color. And I just think when they're seasoned after you've been using them they just seem to pick up color and hold it a little better and like I said I've never had ink transfer from one color to the other and it not come out the color I want it to be so I'm just adding some of the aged mahogany the darker color I'm adding on the wing like the belly the chest it's little tail feathers and it's little top knot I don't know what that's called on birds but I'm going to call it a top knot and I just added a little bit of that aged mahogany um, to those areas. So they kind of stand out a little bit more. I just grabbed my mustard seed, mustard seed, sorry, and gonna color in those cute little beaks. And then I'm gonna grab some pink. And I'm just using one color of pink here, some picked raspberry, and I'm gonna apply it a little lighter and then I'll go a little darker around the edges where I want that little bit of dimension added. So we're going to get this little bird all nicely colored in and color that wing as well. And then I just uh, purposely pick up a little extra of that color and add it again to like the belly and the little top knot and the little tail feathers. And I colored right over where the eyes are going to go because we're going to color cover those up here in a minute and I'm just leaving those in there because I want a little bit of height and a little bit of dimension. Sorry about my glasses. I'm not sure what happened there. I take them off so I can see details and they ended up being left there. But well, we can't forget the hearts because we're going to use those for embellishments. So I'm just using that same lumberjack plaid and I'm going to lay down quite a bit of ink because I want these well colored, covered, and I want the color to be pretty saturated. So once I'm done with that, I am going to make sure all my brushes are nice and clean and those will go back in a holder. I put them in a holder that Cat Scrappiness sells that I love because it doesn't allow my bristles from these little blending brushes to touch one another and contaminate from one color to another color family. So I just used some homemade stamp cleaner, cleaned off my work surface. So as I'm flipping things around, I don't accidentally ruin any of my panels or my birds or anything else that I've done. This little paper pad is so cute. I mean, look at these different patterns so many possibilities and I love these colors I love that they've taken the red and the pink and like the white and mixed in a little bit of cocoa brown this has some cocoa brown hearts on it would be so cute for a coffee card and I'm not even a coffee drinker but I think it would be super cute on a coffee card make make a cute birthday card with that with some coffee on it for the coffee lover in your life and so I just cut this down. It is cut down to four by five and a quarter. And this is gonna be my background panel that I'm gonna layer everything on. <clears throat> and so I wanna put my little perch on there. Well, I decided that, oh, this is cute, but in the end, this little perch needs a little dimension. So I went and cut two more perches out using, just ran it through my die cut machine and then I'm just gonna stack those up. Honestly, that little chain is just way too small to put foam tape <laughs> under. So, and I want it to be really sturdy and the chain, the little detail on the chain is what makes this die. So um, once I remove those little inner pieces, I'm just gonna use some liquid adhesive um, to stack up my purchase to give it a little bit of dimension. And I love this look. I think it's a quick way to add the dimension and it's a quick way to make sure whatever you want dimension under has 
lots of stability. So just use the liquid adhesive, um, gives you a little bit of time to move things around and make sure that everything is lined up just so, because you definitely want this chain lined up just so, so you catch that beautiful detail that's in this die. And I'm using my reverse tweezers here from Cat Scrappiness. I use these on every project. Um, I love that they are not, don't have a black tip. So the, some of the ones with a black tip can tend to leave um, a bit of black behind. These don't. And like I said, I use them for every project and I definitely use them to hold when I, uh, dies when I'm stacking them up and gluing them. So I'm gonna put something heavy on this. Be careful, the, the background cardstock there with the hearts on it has a little tiny bit of a slick surface. So that glue is gonna slide. So make sure you put it straight down and then put something straight heavy right on top of it so it doesn't move on your cardstock. I just need the eyes of these birds. So you can see I'm just cutting out parts of them. All I'm trying to do is make sure I have the those little um, eyes and eyelashes and um, they're pretty small believe it or not I have not lost any of these but you can barely see them there on my screen they look like little specks and I'm just going to carefully pull my bird off now you can see its little eyelash fell off so what I'm going to do is I put it back into place I'm just going to grab a piece of tape and tape it from behind to hold that into place it doesn't add any height. Nobody knows it's there, but it holds things in place from behind. So I'm going to do this the same with my other little bird. Put a little tape over his little eye, flip him over, and um, going to grab some liquid adhesive. And you're definitely going to want something small like an embellishment tool when you're putting these little birds together. So I'm going to start by putting the little pink one together, and I put its little wing on there and um, I'm just trying to decide which way it goes. I, I don't think with these little dies you can go wrong. And I put a little bit of glue where its little eyelash is going to go. Now this little eyelash again is going to be have a little bit of dimension compared to the rest of his body which works perfect. And the little um, beak is adorable but it is small. So that embellishment wand helps hold it into place. Use the little other end to move everything around and get it right where you need it to be. And these go together super fast. And I love how the little wings layer up and add that dimension. I love when dies have dimension. And this set is so cute because I think it comes together and it just kind of comes to life with the dimension that you can get from the dies. So we're getting everything into place. I'm kind of making an adjustment on his little eye because it wasn't quite where I wanted it to be. <coughs> and so next we're gonna add that wood piece that we colored onto the bottom of this perch. And we are putting liquid adhesive on a very slick surface, that metallic paper. So it kind of moved on me when I put my acrylic block on. So be very careful. Just know that you can adjust it um, and then carefully let it dry. So I'm just setting that aside and letting that dry. And I didn't even really want to scoot it out of the way because I didn't want to take a chance that that little perch moved at all because uh, it really makes it all come together. I'm going to use some foam squares to adhere my birds to my project, but I don't have any of the little, littler foam squares. I don't know why, but apparently I need to order some. I'm just, I just took one of the bigger ones and cut it into fours and it works just fine. And that's what I needed for each of the birds. So I have put my foam squares on the back and I'm just kind of putting everything into place, seeing where I want it before I take my release paper off and have it stuck down forever. I always kind of like to make sure everything's right where it is right where it is where I want it to be. So once it is there and I'm happy with it, I just remove the release papers and um, stick those into place. So I'm just kind of seeing how far I want them apart. And this is where those little reverse tweezers again come in handy just to hold things. And it 
really just helps keep your fingers out of the way so you can see in this situation. I can lay it down, see exactly what it's going to look like, put it right where I want it, and then just press it right into place. Um, I think reverse tweezers are a super important part of a card maker's tools. So I'm going to get this little pink bird put into place. I have their little beaks almost touching, but not quite. And going to clean up my area just a little bit. And this is looking so cute. I am so happy with this so far. This uh, background with the cardstock panel is adorable. And I'm just going to grab a scrap paper piece of card black card stock I have a whole drawer of it and I'm using my anti-static powder tool from cat scrappiness to stamp um, a sentiment from the sweet tweets sentiment stamp set and that anti-static powder tool from cat scrappiness is by far my favorite I have a couple like that one but I love that the cat scrappiness one puts out a good amount of anti-static powder I want to see it so I know it's down there and it's working, especially on black. A tip I have is never touch the brush bristles because it can pick up oil from your hands. I, I hear the, the bristles are really soft. I believe anyone who tells me that, I just don't want to take the chance that my tool's not going to work perfectly every time. So my suggestion is just don't touch those bristles and... Um, again, this one puts out a good amount of anti-static powder and it really helps to make sure that your embossing powder is only going where you want it to go. So I'm going to heat set this. I just used some white detail embossing powder on my sentiment and that I stamped with some Versamark ink. And I always, after I've heat put the heat to it and it's melted, I set it aside for a minute to cool before I wipe off that extra anti-static powder that's still on my cardstock. While that's cooling, I grabbed a piece of red cardstock from my stash that coordinated with my background panel. And I just um, cut a piece in half so it's 11 by five and a half. Uh, used a scoreboard to score that at five and a half and then used my awesome uh, Teflon bone folder from Cat Scrappiness to give that a nice crease. Wiped off that extra anti-static powder and then I decided just to use my trimmer to cut out my sentiment. So I am just lining it up, making sure my words are even so you can see me kind of tweaking it there but you can pretty much eyeball it and get it pretty perfect. I felt I did a pretty good job with this. Um, sometimes they can really get off, but you can usually take your trimmer and get those to be pretty close to being perfect. You could measure if you wanted to. I don't tend to want to take that time. So again, I'm just eyeballing it and I think it turned out just great. If you have some sentiments, uh, strip dies those would be awesome too so now we just need to assemble everything and i think this little background panel needs to be popped up on my red card base i'm just using some fun foam that has score tape on both sides cutting it that down to size you're going to adhere that right to the background panel and then a tip i have is if you're going to use this for your dimension and you can even even if you use foam tape on the back of it anything that's sticky I suggest you put down liquid adhesive because it allows you a little bit of wiggle room to make sure that you get that panel just where it needs to be on your card base and you don't ruin your card base and have to rip it apart I have done that way too many times so this is a tip that I saw another crafter do and I've started using it and I love it. So, and I, you, you have to get right over that to get it in exactly where it needs to be. So I did cut out my head over the middle of the camera, putting that just where it needs to be in the middle of that card base. 
going to use some black foam squares on the back of my cute little sentiment strip that I made here to pop this up. I did debate, do I want it flat on the card? Do I want dimension? But I'm a sucker for dimension. I love it. I tend to use lot, quite a bit of dimension on my cards. I very seldom make flat cards. So I put that right below my little birds on their perch. And now we need to do something with those cute little hearts um, that make perfect embellishments. So I'm just getting those out off my post-it tape there. And yeah, they really wanted to stick to my hands for whatever reason, but this is definitely where you want an embellishment wand. These are just way too hard to pick up with your fingers and your fingernails to get them into place. I'm gonna put three up above my little birds. And then I have room right down there on my sentiment and I'm gonna pop that fourth one. <clears throat> so this is pretty cute and pretty sweet just as it is. But I decided that those little hearts need a little bit of shine. So I add some glossy accents off to the side. I'm just squeezing that out and making sure I have all the bubbles out of the glossy accents. And then I'm putting them right over the top of my hearts. I will tell you as this dries, it does change that color of that lumberjack plaid. It makes it a lot more uh, bright red, which is fine because it makes them really stand out and you can really see those embellishments right above the birds a lot better. So something I do when I make a colored card base is I do add a panel to the inside of that card to give it a little bit more stability. That way if somebody who receives it wants to stand it up, it's strong enough to do so. So I cut this panel down. I took a quarter inch off of each side. And then I'm just gonna grab my Misty and I'm gonna grab another sentiment from that Sweet Tweets stamp set. I'm gonna grab the Happy Anniversary. I think this is a perfect um, anniversary card. Um, it would be, it, you could make it into a birthday card too, especially for like your significant other. It would be a perfect birthday card for them. So I'm just putting that right in the middle of this little panel. Gonna use just my lumberjack plaid and I'm gonna stamp that. I do choose to stamp it three times because I want it a little darker. I just keep stamping a color until I get the color and the depth I want. The more you stamp it, the darker it gets so you can change your stamp pad colors easily by just stamping them multiple times. My suggestion is, is you do this before you put the glossy accents on, but I forgot. And so we want to be careful not to touch that glossy accents because it is still wet. And if you touch it, you're going to have to be fixing those little embellishments. So I am being very careful. I put glue on that panel and I'm just very careful. I'm not laying that front all the way back because I don't want to touch that glossy accents. I put liquid adhesive on it, which allows me to move it around a bit. Once I have it right where I want it, I just close it and press from the front. This is my cute little card. I hope you go out and grab this darling little set. The Tweet Hearts is adorable and so is this paper pack. Thank you so much for stopping by. Make sure to give us a like, subscribe to our channel, and check us out over on social media. We'll see you next time. Bye.